My next guest was one of the youngest to ever compete on Big Brother. She made up one-sixth of the legendary Cookout Alliance, eventually finishing fifth. In her time in the house, she was known for being very genuine, strong when she needed to be, and the ultimate strategist as a super fan. Please welcome my next guest, Hannah Chatta. Hi, everybody out there. Welcome to Mindful Reality, where I cover reality TV from a mental health perspective. And this is another mindful conversation. I'm so excited about the guest that I have here today. This is Hannah Chada. Um, I have met, hi, hi Hannah. And I've met her a few times now. And the last time I met her, I asked her if she would be willing to join me for a conversation. I said an interview and she said, I'd rather call it a conversation, which I also do that too. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. How's it going? It's going pretty well. Like I was telling you before, and my viewers already know because I've been covering Big Brother sick and in bed and through coughing and, you know, Aww. it's been a rough few days, but I'm glad to be here. Yeah, same here. So I have a lot of things that I want to get into with you. But yep. before I even start with that, uh, I asked some of my subscribers if they wanted to submit any questions for you. And I had someone who wanted to submit a video question, if you didn't mind answering that. Yeah, let's do it. Sure. So I'm going to start with that. Hannah, what's going on? My name is Matthew. I'm a huge fan of Big Brother and an even bigger fan of yours. I hope we truly get to meet someday. But um, I just had one question, and it was, how does it feel living with all of the weight on your shoulders of being the number one queen of the wide-angle camera? You know, I've just been dying to know, and as a big fan of Big Brother, who hopes to make it on the show one day, I figured I'd ask. But Mark, Mark, thank you for the opportunity to ask this question. I'm your number one fan, Hannah, and with peace and love. Bye. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh my gosh. How did you get him to do that? <laughs> I just reached out and I asked him because I had, you know, met him that same night. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Do you think I should make one more general so that people could understand? I'm like, nah, if she gets it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you want me to explain what you he can meant explain? By that? He gave me an explanation, but you could give me yours. Okay, so there is this setting on the iPhone camera. It's called 0.5x, and it gives you a wide angle um, view. So you're, I don't know, you can make it look like the camera is a lot higher than you are. You can make it look like your arms and your limbs are a lot longer than they are just by using this wide angle lens feature. Um, and that's something that I've been doing with my friends from home for a long time. So since I am one of the younger people in the reality TV space, and I think it's just a very common way to capture moments amongst Gen Z, I decided to start sharing how to take your pictures that way with my fellow BB alum, with people from Survivor, just with people in the space. And at this point, I've introduced so many people to the 0.5x, even people outside of reality TV, that it's kind of become my thing, even though I didn't invent it. And coincidentally, Turner would take his pictures that way, too, even before coming on to the show. So it's just like this this little uh, joke and banter we have, like, oh, who's the queen of the wide angle lens? Who's the king of the 0.5X? So I'm glad that Turner acknowledged I was the pioneer in that, but that's so funny. Shout out to you, Turner. Um, I think I'll be seeing Turner relatively soon, so I'm excited for that. And he's just, he's good people for sure. I think that uh, he would do okay on the show and maybe he would fizzle out early or he could finish top three who knows anything in between yeah. uh, with peace and love mm -hmm. i think so <laughs> i think so too yeah <laughs> <laughs> so somewhere i wanted to start though man sometimes when you talk to, uh, the interactions that i've had with you once you get in the conversation i'm not thinking about your age to be honest with you oh. like you honestly like you present in conversation as older than you are you know like more mature 
Thank you. So my research team, which is me, <laughs> <laughs> discovered that um, you were only born a couple of months before the first episode of Big Brother ever aired. Mm -hmm. You were born in May, right, of 2000? Mm -hmm. And Big Brother aired for the first time in July of 2000. Yeah, I'm less than two months older than the show. Right. So we're around the same age, yeah. You're around the, yeah, you're, you, you know, you're siblings. Yeah, twins, pretty <laughs> much, twin. yeah. You're, you're yeah. part of the twin challenge. Yeah. So when did you get into actually watching the show? How old were you? Um, This is funny. Uh, Well, the question itself isn't funny, but my answer is kind of, funny in the sense that it always surprises people. So I wasn't introduced to Big Brother until the January of the year that I went on. Um, I really? got sick. Exactly. Because I do tell people I'm a very big fan of the show. I think that became apparent as you guys watched me a couple summers yeah. ago. I'm still very much involved with the community. So people just assume that I've been watching it for a long time. I did not know what Big Brother was really as of two and a half years ago. Um, but I was oh sick. Oh my with COVID. goodness. I know, I know. I got sick with COVID and I was in bed with nothing to do for 14 days. And so uh, my sister was like, Oh, you have to check out this show. Brandy from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is on it. And so is Candy from Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now, my sister and I are notorious for being Bravo, specifically Real Housewives fans. So anything that the Real Housewives are on, I'm going to support. So I started watching Celebrity Big Brother 1. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was entertaining. And just to watch all of these personalities and characters that I had grown up with engage in this social experiment was intriguing to me. So then I went and watched season two of Celebrity Big Brother. And in my opinion, Celebrity Big Brother season two is the best season of Big Brother period. Mm -hmm. Not in terms of gameplay, but they were unhinged in that house. Tamar, Lolo, <laughs> Natalie, Tom Green, <laughs> Dina, yeah. um, an eclectic bunch for sure. So then after that, I was like, okay, there must be a Celebrity Big Brother season three. Well, according to my research, there was none. So then I was like, do I watch Celebrity Big Brother UK? But I didn't know what a VPN was. I'm very technologically challenged. That's just something about me. Um, so I was like, okay, maybe I can start watching the regular version of Big Brother US, but that's just not going to be as good. Um, so I started with season 22 and I worked my way backwards. And I am thankful I did that because in starting with season 22, I was able to witness the greatness and the sisterhood between Davon and Bailey. Davon was obviously very vocal about the impact of BLM and yeah. our social justice awakening on Big Brother. And that's something that very much inspired me to want to contribute to her legacy. Um, and so I worked my way backwards and I was like, ooh, 21 was rough, but mm, okay, let's try 20. I loved watching Tyler play on season 20. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it was cool to be able to see Bailey's original season before she had met Swaggy and um, before they got married and then just kept working my way backwards. And I became just more obsessed and enthralled with the game. And so I was in the middle of holding two internships. I was in school full time for my master's program. I was studying for the MCAT, which was about 40 hours a week. I was working a part time job downtown. So like 35 minutes away from my family's house. And um, I was still dancing. And then from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. every single night, I would watch Big Brother. And this was before I even decided I wanted to apply. So I became a student of the show. And then my sister was like, Hannah, your birthday's the week before the cutoff. So you will be 21 by the time the season starts. Why don't you apply? And I was like, eh, I, I don't know. And she was like, well, you know, I'm in school um, to be a video editor. I would love to just film you and edit it and submit it for you. So Simone, my little sister, wrote my application, submitted it, filmed my video, edited it. To this day, I haven't really seen it. So I don't know what they saw. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the rest the rest was history. Um, I had, yeah, I'd essentially only watched, or I'd essentially only been watching Big Brother for like five months before going into the house. But by that point, I had seen a majority of the seasons and 
like I said, I just became a student of the game. You are you are hardcore. I, I gotta say, I have a schedule that I find to be busier than most, where I have where I do more things than most. Mm -hmm. I don't think people who watch my channel realize that this is a hobby that I force into my schedule just because mm -hmm. I like doing it. But I, you know, like I do counseling for a living. I do photography and videography. There's just like a bunch of different things that I fit in there. But talking to you makes me feel like I'm doing nothing. <laughs> no, 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 it's not meant to be a competition at all. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not trying to say it's, I'm saying this as a compliment to you. Oh, well, because you. I remember seeing you at the lip sync battle. And oh, I yeah you at the lip sync battle and i stayed to the whole end of the night when everybody was mostly gone and it was just like a few of y'all outside and i saw you standing there with your big suitcase and i was like oh so you're leaving tonight to go to washington for your first class in the morning and you're like oh oh yeah like you know i'm getting on this bus 3 30 in the morning and then i got my class at, what time was the class at and what time did, so my sister lives in that area. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I know that got to be a good, what, four hours or something like that to, to get. Yeah, to it was about three and a half hours. I got three to and half hours. 15. I changed really quickly, brushed my hair, put on a bit of makeup and just headed straight to school. I, I assume that was the case. Cause what would you yeah. have time to do when you get there? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. And then so I got I back on a train to uh, support Aza for her premiere party. When I saw you walk in the door for the premiere party, I was like, is that Hannah? Yeah. <laughs> How did she manage? I was, I did not sleep from Sunday until thir Thursday night was my first night of sleep. I went like a full 96 hours without sleep. But coffee was my best friend. <laughs> you know, I don't know why I do this to myself. I stretch myself so thin, but at the same time, I think it's important it. to be time and room for everything that makes you happy and as far right. as i'm concerned my family makes me happy my friends school science math medicine big brother dance all these things make me happy so why not do it all if you can I, i'm actually really inspired by hearing you say that because if i were to put in 15 things into my schedule that i didn't like mm -hmm. every single one of them would be a weight on my shoulders yeah adding this in i'm adding this in but doing this interview with you or spending all these hours on live feeds or doing things to help the community with mental health even though they're things that take energy the type of energy they take is not a draining energy yeah tiring one but it's not draining if you know what i mean yeah i completely agree with that so yeah so i respect I that and I had so much fun at Lip Sync and at Aza's premiere party. She did a phenomenal job. So, Aza, I, if you're watching this, shout out to you. You killed I, I it agree. in those events. Yeah. I agree. Shout out to Aza. Um, mm -hmm. I have to say, though, that you taught me something about requesting interviews at events. A, mm -hmm. do it earlier in the night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because because I, just, I, just, I just have to say that I got about seven yeses. Uh, towards the end of the lip sync thing, but it was okay. at the end. So you know that by the end of the night, people are already going, having fun mm -hmm. and they might not really remember your conversation too well the next day. Oh, well, you don't got to worry about me because I don't really drink, so. Well, okay, so there was that. And then there was, you're the only person who, when I asked you, you are like, okay, check my schedule, all right, I have this day and this time, plugging that in right now, send me the Zoom link immediately, and I'm gonna be there at that time. So I was like, I can count on Hannah to be there at this date and time, because she already locked it in. Of I course. appreciated that. Don't even mention it. <laughs> I appreciated that. And also you remembered me on your um, royalty podcast, because I don't have my name on there. I comment mm -hmm. under my music and mental health name yeah and you were always like, oh thanks mark thanks for being here mark and i'm like how do you remember i'm mark because i don't think that i even said my and name Philly, you introduced yourself to me and you told me about your podcast so when i saw the podcast name i put two and two together 
people don't remember those things though like so i you have a good memory though you have like a super memory yeah um, <laughs> Something. But also just remembering people's names and faces, I think, goes a long way for that person. Like I always, whenever no. people talk to me, it makes me feel special when they remember my name, when they remember my face, when they remember a little tidbit about my life. So I try to do the same. With other oh, no, I 100% agree with you. Just you being like, I remember you coming from um, Long Island to Philly and you know introducing yourself and whatever that is important and special to me because i know that you meet a lot of different people but if they say i remember the last time i met you the same thing happened when i spoke to taylor over there mm -hmm. and she, she specifically said something funny where she was like i said oh yeah i met you in philly and she said i know yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was like oh you know and she said yeah i, I never forget a black face Oh, <laughs> yes, black faces are easier to remember than, than their white counterparts. Because sometimes, I mean, even with uh, Travis and Christian from my cast, I sometimes still confuse them. Travis and Christian, there was others. I'm not even going to get into that. But there was others that I had trouble for a while. And then I was like, okay, this is this one and this is that one. Yeah. But usually us, who was mm -hmm. like, oh, black guy with beard. Like, I was at that uh, lip sync thing, and this one man came up to me, like, four times and asked me if I was, um, what's his name? Bryce. Mont oh, no, Bryce. He was, like, looking at me, looking at me. I'm like, why does he keep looking at me? He's like, oh, question, are you Bryce? I'm like, no, Bryce is here. I'm not Bryce. And oh. then... <laughs> And then uh, he asked me three more times after asking me the first time. So I went over to Bryce because I had met him before. I'm like, this guy over here has asked me four times if I'm you. And he said, yeah. you know what, man? Take it as a compliment. We're both handsome black men. So just leave it at that and don't worry about it. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> So I haven't even gotten into the questions that I had for you yet. That was just, oh, that, that was, was just a, warming up. Yeah, I guess that was just warming up. So Zingbot, mm -hmm. I'm going to jump right into that. Okay. Zingbot, so I, you're the second person I interviewed from your season. Oh, okay. Who was the first? The first person was Alyssa Lopez. How do you know that? I think she told me that she did uh, your channel. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was yeah. Alyssa Lopez. You're right. You're right. Uh, yeah. She was the first person that I interviewed from Big Brother, actually, at all. Oh, okay. Um, I have now met five of your six cookout members, and you were there all those times, so I'm sure you know who I didn't meet and who I did meet. Uh, you didn't meet Xavier. Exactly. I met everyone yeah. but X. Yep. Never. I happened to meet Kylan because I, when I spoke to him at the last, at the premiere party, he yeah. said he decided the day before or something like that, that he was going to come. Yeah. So I met him. I had already met you, Big D, and Tiffany, mm -hmm. and Aza. Yeah. Met Big yeah D and Aza a couple times. What did you say? I said I had met Big D and Aza a couple of times, actually. Yeah. Uh, Xavier never comes to anything. He's such I've, a Yeah. Home. Yeah, and I, I've gotten that. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the point that I was going to make. Oh, you did Alyssa? Yeah, I did my interview with Alyssa, and then you're the second person that I asked. Okay. I, was, I guess my point was, I've met so many people from your season. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, I started watching Big Brother in 2020. Oh, okay, with All Stars. I'm, I'm a, yeah, I'm a new fan. I'm a okay. relatively new fan, so... Mm -hmm. I didn't know I relate to you in that way, even though you've seen more seasons than I have and mm -hmm. you know a lot more about it. But I was a Lifetime Challenge fan. Mm, okay. I started watching the challenge day one. I loved the real world and the challenge. Wow. And then they started putting all the big brother people, <laughs> Josh, Jesse, Casey, uh, Amber B, like a bunch of them. Tommy, they added recently, like a bunch of them that they put on there. Yeah. I was annoyed. Oh, not, that because, is... not necessarily because I don't like them. Mm -hmm. It's like, imagine you watch a show and you know everything about it. You know all the background stories. Mm -hmm. I remember this one particular season with Casey and Bailey on there. 
mm-hmm. and they were trying to give some like connection between some beef they were having on the challenge and oh. related to their relationship on Big Brother, mm. where Bailey was saying, we had this really close relationship, mm-hmm. almost flirtatious in nature. And now when we get on the challenge, he's not riding for me like that. And they're just showing us a little 10 second clip of them laying in bed together. If you mm-hmm. watch enough Big Brother, people cuddling with each other is not really an indication of like, we're about to get in a relationship or we're feeling that kind of way about each other. So I didn't know. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I, I don't know either just because Casey and Bailey's friendship wasn't really covered on the show like that. Yeah. Um, and I didn't have access to season 20s live feeds because I didn't start watching the show until a couple years later. So yeah, I didn't know anything about that. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, so like 2020, um, the pandemic, and I'm here in New York. Mm -hmm. So everything was locked down and shut down. My job became remote. They said, we have a 6 p.m. curfew. You can't go anywhere unless you're an essential worker. This and that and the Mm -hmm. other. So I was like, there's nothing to do. So Mm -hmm. I subscribed to all these apps, Mm -hmm. Paramount Plus, I resubscribed to Hulu, Netflix, because at one time I said, my life is interesting enough. The things I see outside in New York are interesting enough Yeah. that I'm not really into these TV shows anymore. Mm-hmm. But then when I was stuck in the house and I couldn't people watch or I couldn't do things, events and all that stuff, I was like, might as well give it a try. My friends are all telling me you need to get into Big Brother. Yeah. I told Alyssa this too. I started on season 16. I loved season 16. Mm -hmm. I went to season 10 and then I went to season one and then I went to season 22. I saw like half of it live. Okay. And then your season though was the first that I actually sat down from the time the season started Mm -hmm. episode one to the final episode. So I'm I'm spoiled. I'm biased. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I loved your season. I know some people were like saying so many different things about it. Mm-hmm. It was boring. The alliance protected each other, so it's not, it doesn't count the same. Mm-hmm. There's reverse racism going on. Like, what did you think about the feedback that you were getting about that? Um, I'd say for the most part, it was more positive than I expected it to be. I didn't know. If because when we're encased and entrapped in that house, we don't know how the public's perceiving us. We don't know how CBS is covering and sharing our story. So I sort of adopted the mindset of prepare for the worst. So I was expecting to come out of the house and, you know, be hated, but instead, or not hated, but I, I just expected there to be a lot more pushback from the main demographic that watches Big Brother, my fear was that they wouldn't be able to empathize with us. They wouldn't understand why something like the cookout was very necessary at that time. Uh, But for the most part, we were met with a lot of love and support and people from all different backgrounds saying that we inspired them in some way, shape or form. And people, especially within the black community being like, it was so nice to not be forced to relate to tokenized black women on the season or the tokenized black man and said there were six of you and all of you were so different from each other so i didn't have to relate to you hannah if you know we don't really share that many similarities instead i could relate to somebody like aza and i could see myself reflected in her so it it was better than anything i could have expected walking out of that house um And also, like, as a super fan of the show, I think the only thing you want is to be able to leave a legacy on the game that supersedes you, that extends beyond yourself. And very few players have been able to make that kind of mark. Janelle, Dan, Dr. Will, mostly white players, Devon, The Cookout, Taylor. Like, I'm, I'm part of, you know, that group that probably consists of less than 25 house guests. So that is something that's 
so cool for me as a fan, but also as somebody who wanted to be a role model to, or was more than willing to step into the shoes and fill the shoes of being a role model for young black women and young South Asian women. I feel proud of my performance and the way that I conducted myself in that house. And I think that was met with a great response from people. Now, of course, we got pushback, you know, reverse racism, um, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't exist. So whatever, that was water off my back. Um, and then, you know, people did say it was boring to watch an Alliance steamroll. I completely I, I don't agree. I don't agree. I think it can be boring to watch one Alliance just, well, it, we didn't steamroll I, because we didn't win every competition. Instead, we used the art of... It, manipulation but but here's the here's the reason why i say i didn't agree i know you might just think okay a black man is saying i don't agree because he was interested in seeing the cookout succeed mm -hmm. maybe i know it's partially because i am a african-american male okay i can accept that but anyone who is an african-american who has tried to work with a group of friends or family in a large number to accomplish a task knows how hard it is to get that done mm -hmm. because egos get in the way um you guys had a good plan a great plan in the theory when it came to being like okay we are the six of us and to throw everyone off our trail we each have to have a person and we all have to be willing to go sit next to that person in the block but then there's other factors because you're not just thinking about, okay, we want to get to the final six. You're thinking about, I want to have a good position when I get into the final six. So then there's squabbles about the order of which pawn is going on on what week. Who's going to get the HOH at one week? Mm -hmm. There was arguments within the cookout that were happening all season. Like, there was arguments between um, Tiffany and Kylan. You had some arguments with Kylan, Aza and you, you know, like Xavier and Kyle. It was just like, it wasn't like some foregone conclusion that you were going to make it to the six because if one of you goes rogue, it's yeah. a wrap for the whole six. Yeah, no, you're right. It was a journey to get there. It wasn't, that's what I mean by like, we didn't necessarily steamroll because we didn't have the power at all times. And also there were, a lot of internal differences and yeah. there was a lot of internal strain within the six but as somebody who watches a lot of tv a lot of movies i think as a viewer you appreciate whenever there's resistance yeah. and we didn't have that because we had such a good handle on our plus ones so i get that but from a social perspective it was just necessary so i don't care if it wasn't as entertaining as you wanted it to be it needed to happen for our predecessors the black players who came before us and it needed to happen for future black players and so sorry not sorry <laughs> i can also admit to that side too though i can actually admit to that side too because so when i get somebody for one of these conversations i tend to actually watch every episode that they were in and it takes a long time to do that, but I do that. I did that for Alyssa, and I was like, but I've already seen, Aly you were only in like maybe two more episodes than her. So yeah. I was like, oh, I don't really need to watch this all over again. But when I started, mm -hmm. I was like, watching it for one person and watching it for another person is like watching two different shows. Mm, and then, it, yeah, watching it from the point of view of Alyssa forced me to take off my cookout glasses because mm -hmm. I was just like I don't care about the collateral damage I just care about the people that I'm rooting for I was so anxious for you guys to make it yeah so now looking at somebody who was having many conversations with you with X with Kylan with all these people that she was actually cool with yeah um, but she was always on the outside mm -hmm. I didn't really think of it from that perspective Mm -hmm. And then I saw her on Challenge USA 1, and I was like, she's wilding a little bit. I don't know why she's so upset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> watching it back from her perspective and then talking to her about it, I was mm -hmm. like, I, I have a better understanding of you now because of that. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. 
And yeah, I didn't. Because I mean, as just like a a viewer of the show, you're kind of watching it for all 16. Like, yes, you do have your favorites, but unless you're the the family member or the friend of one particular person, you're going to be paying attention to everything pretty equally. So that's just, that's interesting to me how you got something totally different from the show out of watching it for just her yeah. versus watching it for the cookout or watching it for me or watching it for Tiff or X or, you know, so. So uh, the thing that I was telling you about Zingbot, mm. Zingbot said, knock, knock. Who's there? It's like Hannah. Hannah who? He said, exactly. So yeah. I'll be honest with you. I had a general great feel about you from the show. Like just thinking about the show in its totality, beginning to end. I was like, Hannah is one of my favorite people from that cookout season. And I'm not just saying that because you're here. I think I told you that when I met you the first time. Yeah. Um, but then when I watched back the first half of the season, without live feeds just the produced show mm -hmm. i'm like hannah's, where was she yeah I'm like hannah's hardly even in these episodes yeah like I, like I remember a little thing with brent flirting with you i remember uh what was it like the dx you know when you said you had a crush on dx mm -hmm. and then like the moment when he went out and you were sad uh, but there wasn't too many hannah moments until maybe the last eight when you won the POV, when you won the HOH, and then when you, right after that, got into that double eviction where Tiffany went out and then you went out. Yeah. So it was like a jam-packed amount of things happened to you in that span of time. But mm -hmm. before that, it wasn't so much. Yeah. But you... Yeah. But I would say, but I want to say, in, in your defense, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. I watched the feeds... Mm -hmm. And the thing is, there are so many strong personalities that came from your season. Mm -hmm. Kylan, obviously, Tiffany, X, you know, he's a little quieter. He's still a strong personality. Um, Az is a strong personality. Uh, you, even as the youngest person there, you were a glue person. And I remember you had some very important conversations. Like, for instance, when Tiffany was gunning for that HOH against Kylan, and I forget what that thing is called, but you got to hold on to the, the ropes and it spins around or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they were like, the plan is for you to drop. Like, come mm -hmm. on, what's going on? Why are you not dropping? And she's like, I want that HOH. Mm -hmm. So everybody, and then X, uh, not X, um, Alyssa and X went up. She put Alyssa and X up instead of putting up Claire. Mm -hmm. And then Alyssa ended up winning this the thing with stacking the glasses and X mm -hmm. and everyone was like, that's your karma. You were the one person who was actually like, even though we're trying to get to the six, everybody still has their positioning that they're trying to get to in the game. Mm -hmm. So you talked to one group and you talked to Tiffany. Tiffany had nobody on her side at that point. And mm -hmm. you were like, there's a way that you can inform Claire without exposing the whole cookout, but mm -hmm. that makes you feel better in your heart. Mm -hmm. And you were trying to convince the guys and everyone else, like, I know that you guys are mad that she did not do this as planned and just put Claire up there in the first place. Mm -hmm. But it's hard for all of us because mm -hmm. I know all of you had a hard time with your person when it was yeah. time for them to go. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's a very accurate, um, I guess, portrayal of my journey. Um, I mean, I'm a relatively reserved person. I, I'm never going to be the loudest person in the room, especially when I'm in a room of 15 just super out there people. Um, so, yeah, I, I did take a back seat, And I think on top of that, I would wager to say I sort of like fill my own archetype. I'm sort of a derivative of like the Ian archetype or Corey from this season, but they're white men and I'm a young black woman, a young South Asian woman. And I'm also a brainiac. I love school. That's my thing. 
And so I think it was very hard for producers to edit me. I think it's hard for them in general to edit young women who aren't just there to be in a showman's. So I think that was a struggle of theirs, like me sitting back, observing and being quiet, combined with them just not really having a precedent for me. Um, and a lot of my story did initially revolve around the men in the house. Like there was that storyline with me and Brent. There was that storyline with me and you Derek Afton. Those were just very minor aspects of my game. Yeah. But I think once... I was on the block in week four. That's when you started to see a bit more of me because you have to show the nominees. Yes, yes. And I think that's when people were like, oh, wait, okay, she has a, she's picking things up. She has a mind for the game. She convinced Christian to not target her when, I guess, four people, the whole Kings team, or maybe three people were like ready to send her home. And then a close ally of mine won HOH the following week. So I think people were like, okay, we're getting a bit more of Hannah. Then I think once Derek X left, I was no longer in anybody's shadow and I was just allowed to be myself. And at that point I had gotten more comfortable with my stance and my social position in that house that I wasn't as reluctant to, to peel back those layers, if that makes sense. So yeah, when Zingbot said that, I was like, okay, I'm not terribly surprised. You have Tiffany who's running around always in every single conversation she's always doing improv and hosting mafia and doing this and that that's never gonna be me so whatever make make these house guests believe that i'm not doing anything in this game so it wasn't at, like zingbot could have called me dumb or zingbot could have said something that would have really hurt my feelings but he didn't i would i would say that honestly you got one of the nicer comments actually uh compared to some of the other ones our season's comments were not they were all fairly tame yeah 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 yeah. so when it came to the cookout you were not explicitly informed of the cookout you said you knew that the five were working together uh there was a conversation that you had on the live feeds with tiffany where she was like i'm sorry that i didn't consider you like a black woman at first and you actually said in your first introduction meeting with the whole house when everyone did their introductions, you were like, I'm half, you know, South African and half Indian. Your mother is is uh, South African, is that right? And your father is Indian. So you said that you were like, I assumed that saying that would mm -hmm. make them know, like, yeah, I'm one of y'all. But then uh, Xavier told you he thought you were part of the white South Africa. Yeah. So I know that you said that you understand it at the time, but like, what was your initial feelings of them having you like, as I even said, I thought it was the five plus one at one point. Mm. Yeah, I think there are multiple layers to why I was excluded um, at first. I do believe that they were always going to have my back and protect me. I think age had a lot to do with it and now that i'm 23 if my because my sister is the same age that i was when i walked into that house so if i were to see one of her friends or one of her peers walk in i'd probably be a bit trepidatious of them too that's something i can totally understand they weren't they didn't know me so they didn't know if i'd be able to comprehend why the cookout needed to form they didn't know if i had loose lips they didn't know if i could understand that the cookout went beyond the six of us so i'm gonna give them that um i also do think that big d xavier even aza right off the bat weren't aware that i was black because in south africa you have black people you have white people you have a lot of indians a lot of malaysians you have the coloreds which are like the mixed people um so I think Aza just assumed that I was colored. Xavier thought I was white. I don't know what Big D was thinking. I still never know what Big D's thinking. <laughs> um, but I did go up to Tiffany night one and I was like, did you know that there are six of us in this? I said the exact same thing to her. And I think it was Kyland that Big D said to all of them. And I was like, there are six of us in this house. 
we have to work together. Like, I, I don't know about what you guys are thinking, but just know that I'm going to have your back no matter what. And we don't even have to talk about this anymore. So we were all just very much on the same page. And I think by week three, when Tiffany came to the, came with me, sorry, came to me with the master plan, that was kind of their, their stamp and seal of approval. Like, okay, we're fully bringing you into the fold now. And once I was able to just grasp a little bit of information, then I just kind of took that and ran with it. Because for the first three weeks, I think everyone in the house was like, oh, she's 21, she's young, she's dumb, she knows nothing. She'll probably be gone soon. We're not going to tell her anything. So, Which is interesting because sometimes we see the young 21-year-olds that are super fans get into this game like, yo, I'm smarter than y'all, I'm younger than y'all, I want to make big moves and I want to make a name for myself. I really think it's a skill in and of itself for you to not have been viewed as that level of threat. Uh, I think people were kind of scared of me. I think they, I think some people were threatened by my memory at the very least. Um, but again, I just don't really think that there has ever been a Hannah Chata in the game prior to Hannah Chata. Like a, a very, since they implemented the age cutoff, I still am the youngest person to have played like at, at that time, obviously yeah. now Corey's younger than I am in present time. Yeah. But um, so not only was I super, super, super young, but I'm also a woman and I'm also a woman of color and I'm also a black woman. There had never been a freshly turned 21 year old who is black ever. So I, I think people just didn't know how to deal with that. I think the show didn't know how to deal with that. I think my house guests didn't know how to deal with that. And I kind of leaned into that a bit. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just the baby sister. Don't worry about me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? You know, how I told you that this is like watching an old movie that you've seen already. You're like, oh, I already know. Like, it's not going to do the same thing for me. I'm skipping ahead of a lot of stuff. Okay. But your eviction on the double eviction night. I was sad like I was watching it for the first time because I actually remembered that I was sad when I watched it originally. Yeah. Because it was like it was such an epic high and low for you to have just gotten HOH not that long before that. And then you had your thing where you got Alyssa out and uh, you were you had, I guess you could call it the most pivotal elimination because it was the one that brought you to the six. Yeah. And it wow, it looked like it was such a pressure moment, especially when you were talking to Alyssa and trying to explain it to her. And you knew what you were saying was not true. And she was like, well, what about this final two that we had? Was that nothing? Like, what's going on with that? And you had this look on your face like, I wondered how you felt in the inside. I felt so bad. I felt and, so bad. And then it was like so quick that it's not even like a thing where you're like, okay, I can work an angle. Or I can. It was just like, she's right in your face right there, seconds later. And she was like, uh, this doesn't make sense to me. You think that I'm going to be the one who stays? You're like, yes, X is the part. X, I mean, X is the target. And she's like, mm, I don't know about that. And then just kind of leaves on shaky grounds with you but you stood firm with what you said mm -hmm. yeah no, were that, you panicking were you feeling like stressed on the inside no not stressed not panicking i just felt bad more than anything i felt bad that well a i felt bad lying to her face because we had just formed a final two and we were like since christian left since derek x left we had been getting closer um and towards the end of her time in the house, we had had some great conversations. So I felt like I was betraying a friend. I felt like I was betraying our game relationship, our personal relationship. Um, but I also just felt so guilty for the fact that I was excited for her to walk out those doors. Because the second she wow. walked out those doors, we were going to be at final six. So more than anything, I was just sad for her. And I was like, uh, why did I, why did I do this to myself? Why did I have to be the one to win this HOH? And the only reason why I won that HOH, because 
was because I didn't trust that, you know, Big D or Xavier wouldn't keep Alyssa in the game and perhaps try to take out Tiff or Kai. So, yeah. And you were the one, I, I mean, I don't know if they just didn't show it with other people, but you were the one who created the plan for just in case Alyssa had won. You're like, I'm going to throw in this vote for Kai. I'm going to throw in this vote, the sympathy vote, and say that it was Kai. And mm. then if Alyssa, in the event that Alyssa wins, um, I'm going to pin that on him. And hopefully he's going to be the target. Mm-hmm. Or if things don't go exactly according to plan to be the first one out. So you're yeah. yours. That's when I finally started to actually see verbally and visually that your gears were really going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, always. Yeah, so I guess I'm just going to cut those ones out. Uh, you already answered how you felt about being part of that cookout season. You said it was really special for you, um, regardless of not coming out of there with the with the big win. And I just wanted to jump ahead with a few questions about, I guess, one or two questions about 24 and a few questions about 25. Sure. I do have to go in like five minutes, just letting you know. Okay. So forget about the 24 question. Okay. Uh, the 25 questions. One of them. How do you feel about Sari and Jared being on the show? Ooh, okay. Well, I don't think we've ever had a mother and son play. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it makes me happy that they have each other in the house. And it also adds an element of like, Ooh, are people going to find out their secret? Is is he going to say something? When are people going to start connecting the dots? Because they have the same face. Um, yeah. But Sari is such a legend. She's amazing at these games. She she's the best. Uh, she's the best to have never won on Survivor. She played Traitor. She won that. And now it's it's very cool to be able to watch her mentor her protege, which is her own son. So I'm I'm loving that twist. I am too, absolutely. I have to ask you if I only have this much time left. I definitely have to ask you about this Luke thing that just happened. Oh, yeah. And I just want to know how you felt about it when you saw it and how you feel about CBS's, you know, quick rea- reaction and removal of him from the show. Yeah, great question. Um, I mean, kind of throwing it back to BB24 with uh, the Kyle situation, the cookout sort of expected that to be a possibility we expected there to be some fear in the season directly following ours that the black people or the pocs or any minority group would be working together um but the fact that kyle was bold enough to say that in a post bb23 world i was like oh okay that's that's bold um now on this season luke did you not learn from did you not learn from the Kyle situation? And also, why are you out here saying the N word so casually? Like that's most definitely a part of his vocabulary. And I was, listen, I can't tell Jared how to respond or how to feel, but it very much to me felt as though Jared just gave him a pass. He he was also incredibly nonchalant about it. And then the way that it was portrayed in the episodes because feeds were down. So we didn't get to see like the the direct ramifications of Luke being expelled and all of that. We just know what we got from the episode. Um, CBS sort of like took Jared's voice and held him to be the authority on using a racial slur yep. on national TV. So we didn't get to hear from Sari, we didn't get to hear from Felicia, Nicole, Kirsten, any of the other people of color in the house. We explicitly heard from the person who they knew would be the most sympathetic towards Luke. And, you know, as a black man, he, uh, his voice was, was more credible than most, or his voice is more credible than most on issues pertaining to the black community. Does that make sense? So like they didn't, yep. They turned to the safest voice they could get. And I thought that was kind of coaxing the situation and diminishing the gravity of the situation. However, I am pleasantly surprised with how swiftly CBS removed Luke. 
Um, I did not expect that in a million years. I thought CBS would just issue a blanket statement. Hey, the views of these house guests do not reflect the views of our network. And I thought they were just going to keep it moving. Although I am sad that Kirsten still had to leave. That was, I, that was unfortunate. I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all, but I did wonder because the fans were trying to make a thing about Kirsten saying the N word to Jared and saying, oh, well, if she said it to him, the word is the word, so you should get both of them out. I almost felt like CBS was very willing to let her just go through with the elimination, knowing that she was going to get eliminated, because it was like, this will take some of that heat off. Mm. So now you guys don't have anything to complain about, because they're both out of there. Yeah. From like a, a marketing standpoint, I could totally see that. But that's ridiculous. Like Kirsten saying the N word is not the same as Luke saying the N word. What? For so many reasons, and I know there's not much time. So I guess the last thing that I'm going to get into you with is Izzy. If oh, you, yeah. if you were on the show, right? Uh -huh. You're Izzy. You know, I don't care. You're Hannah, but yeah. you come on the show as a Survivor super fan, is what I'm trying to say. Uh -huh. You immediately identify. I know that this is Sari, this is Jared, this is her son. I know all the seasons that she's played on. I've watched all of them. Yeah. When they show the edit of how it happened, like, day one, grabbing this man physically. <laughs> I know that you're Jared's. Uh, I, I know that you're Sari's son. Uh, don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. We're going to work together. Mm -hmm. I felt like that was just a really sloppy, dangerous way to have done it. Oh, yeah. How would you hold that move or that power? I love that question because I one of my favorite things about watching Big Brother is just thinking through the different game scenarios and what you would choose and what you would say if you were in that um, predicament. But A, Izzy just did that so hastily. They hadn't even set their towels down from being outside. And she just came, she blurted it out. And she didn't even try to be quiet. Like, it's very possible no. that someone else could have been within earshot. It doesn't seem like anyone else was. But she just wasn't careful. She was sloppy with it. Um, I would not have done that. I would have made the connection. And if Jared were on the block, then I would have definitely waited to see who won HOH. Because you don't know who's going to hold the power. And if... I ended up winning HOH or a close ally of mine ended up winning HOH. I think I would kind of observe how Sari and Jared are interacting, how they're integrating themselves within the house. And if I feel like, okay, I can leverage this information to gain me more social capital because these two are kind of like controlling what's happening, then I would go up to them. Um, also, if they were on the fringes, then I would leverage that information to pull them in and kind of build like an army of my own. Because Jared was on the block, he was in a vulnerable position. And so he he wasn't in the position where he could say like, okay, so-and-so has to go home because he was in jeopardy of going home. But if Jared were not on the block, I would not, I would take my time. Even if I waited like a week, a week and a half, I would also like, want to know who else has observed the same thing as me. I would listen for rumblings. I think the trick is just to listen and wait and be very meticulous. So that's what I would have done. I think that generally a lot of this group, Riley, um, Hysam even, a lot of them are strongly overplaying. Yeah. Uh, they're overthinking. They're talking too much. They're revealing too much in these HOH conversations with everybody. Oh, I'm aware that you're in an eight person alliance with this, 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 this. Is that is that true? Yeah. I've heard that you said if this goes this way, you're gonna do this. And I would respond by doing this, this, and this. And I'm like, you're only an HOH for one week. But honestly, I'm loving just how unhinged everybody is and how oh, as a is. as a fan. Yeah. Not, not as someone who's trying to win the game, but like as a fan watching it, I love it. <laughs> well, Quick question for you, because I do have to go. Sure. Um, who do you think is going to win this season? Who do you think is going to have an enormous fall from grace? And who do you think is our dark horse? Oh, okay. So I didn't even expect to get a question. Mm -hmm. All right. Dark horse. 
I kind of want to say between like Jag and Blue. Jag, Jag and Blue. Um, Blue is kind of she's in alliances and groups, but in she's also kind of laying low a little bit, and not many people are doing that. Okay. Um, uh, Mimi might be a little bit of a dark horse. Okay. I'm rooting for Sari, but I know that Sari has so many odds stacked against her. Um, so that would actually be a tough win. Um, I think Heisen is doing a little too much. Yeah. I feel like he's going to try to win every competition yeah. and he's going to want to be this. People compared him to Kylan. I don't know if you see that comparison at all, but. Oh, actually, sort of like the way that he's been conducting his HOH. His HOH is specific. Very much like Kylan. Um, yeah. But I think he's going to try to be a Michael. He's going to try to beat Win Michael. everything out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what was the other thing you said? The winner's dark the winner. horse. Was it, who's going to flame out? Yeah. Well, I think Riley has kind of already done that. I think that uh, Cameron has kind of done that. He talks way too much. Yeah. And he has a terrible read on the game. Mm-hmm. Um, Corey, I'm not sure of because Corey is very smart and he knows about the game, but it seems like he just doesn't know which direction that he's going. So, Jared, Jared, I could see being a potential to be like, oh, he's here in the final three, or he just talked way too much. And everyone was like, wait, he's on this side, this side, and this side, and that side. So, we need to get him out. Yeah. That would be my answer. Okay. What about you? Oh, what was that? My pick for winner? winner? Yeah. Winner? Um I'm 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 going with Sari. I'm going with Sari. Okay. That's optimistic. It's an, easy pick. it's an optimistic pick. Take Sari out of the equation and I might go with I actually might go with Nicole. Oh, okay. Okay, interesting. Um, I totally agree with you on Jared flaming out. Uh, I see Jared being like an early jury boot, like maybe first in jury or maybe one of the last people in pre-jury. I just think he talks a lot. And I think it's only a matter of time before Izzy slips up and says something, before people start looking at the memory wall and connecting the dots between Ceri's eyes and Jared's eyes and Ceri's nose and Jared's nose. Um, and then at that point, his threat level has just, in like as soon as someone finds out their secret, Ceri and Jared are gonna be the next two and three to be yep. gone because people are gonna be like, whoa, 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 okay, well we can't afford to have a duo that has their hands dipped in every single pot. And also you guys are really good at deceiving us. Um, so I think that's just gonna like, blow his threat level through the roof. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go with Jared. Um, I could also see, okay, here's my theory. I think that Corey is going to come in fifth place. And I think fifth place, I also came in fifth place, is that spot where you're a good player, but you're not a legend, hence why they didn't get rid of you at sixth or even like earlier on in jury. However, they know that if they bring you along to final four, when all of those comps start being a lot more memory based, like you have the days, you have trivia, you have like the true or false A and B, they know that you're going to end up winning and then you're going to be in control of who makes it to final two. Yeah, so they, 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 fifth place to me, it's giving Corey, um, I think that America is our dark horse this season. I'm loving, she, she's very, she's, she kind of reminds me of like my journey. And maybe oh, oh, I can see that. Cause right? I, I didn't really see her in the first week. And then all of a sudden I'm like, she's in some of these important discussions with important yeah. things to say. Yeah. And I, I just, I like how she, despite being a super fan, cause she really is a super fan. She is she's not letting that like cloud her judgment. She's not letting herself get too excited. She's chill. She's in the background. She doesn't have to be 
you know, the ringleader of all these discussions and groups and alliances. She's comfortable with taking that back seat. But whenever you hear her perspective in the DR, you can tell she's thinking about things and she's observing and she's analyzing. And she was one of the few people who was like, wait, why don't we consider keeping Kirsten? Yes, How is getting I remember rid that. of good for every single person in this house that's not possible yes. so i think she's one to watch um but again i think the show just struggles with editing people like her she's obviously very intelligent very accomplished um so america is the one to watch i still have jag as my winner pick i think he's just super cool i don't really see anyone wanting to target him it's jag he's, you know yeah, he's in a good position I and agree he he's really been able to form deeper bonds with people like he has this final two with riley yes but his bonds go below the surface we saw him have that really important conversation with Hysam about being brown in america being yes. Yes. first generation he's sick and uh Hysam is egyptian he's arab he's muslim yes. yes um he's been able to bond with blue because both of them are asian americans he's yeah. been able um to bond with America over being brown, like all, all of it with Jared. Jared, exactly. So Jared was talking about wearing his uh, his chain and his do rag, and how it gives him comfort, and comparing exactly. that to the turban and everything like that. So, exactly. so I think his bonds go below the surface, and that is certainly going to help him out because when you start having those conversations, that makes it a lot harder for people to stab you in the back. Versus like, oh my God, I love your nails. I oh, love your nails too. Let's do hair together. I could send that person out the door yesterday. So yeah, those are my thoughts. But overall this season, I'm already liking way more than BB24. Now with BB24, we got the ending we deserved. Taylor got the ending she deserved, but it was tumultuous. I didn't really like very many of the cast members when I was watching them. So I, BB25, thank you. <laughs> I, I rewatched BB24, or, or I tried to rewatch it before the season started, and it was so hard for me to get through it that I didn't even get through it. The first and, four episodes were just out. But also in terms of like feeds, they didn't play games. They weren't entertaining. They, didn't, they weren't fun. They weren't funny. Your I, season was really fun. I got to say, the, the feeds were yeah. way better than the episodes. Yeah, we were always doing something, always. Yeah. I just want to say, I, I want to thank you so much. You're one of the favorite people that I've ever met from these shows. Oh. Um, just lovely inside and out. You know, like, I, I always enjoy talking to you. And you're one of the reasons that I'm doing this podcast, to be honest with you. So oh. thank, well, thank you, you again. Thank you so much for the kind words. Thank you for having me on. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And I'm sure I'll see you at one of these events again soon. For sure. And good luck with everything else with your medical school. Thank you. Good luck with all of your your hobbies, your passions, your projects as well. And uh, let me know where and when this gets uploaded so I can share it. Absolutely. Okay. Thank Thanks you all. And thank you, Hannah. Um, Mindful Reality signing off.